Hi you guys, welcome back to Ashikash. So I wanted to um before I get started, like always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And when you subscribe to hit the notification bell. I guess I have to continue. Let's get into the video. <laughs> So today I wanted to come on camera and be completely transparent with you guys. I was thinking about putting on like doing a get ready with me putting on makeup and talking about this topic but I just don't think it would be appropriate nor did I want to come off all okay. So as you guys know, I took a week off of social media. Uh, not, I still was like posting here and there on Snapchat and like Instagram and you know stuff like that. But I wasn't like on it like I usually am, and it was not even about the J situation. So I'm gonna like clear that up now. So let's not even say it's this. But um, I just want to come out here and tell you guys that. If that don't know me, that just started watching me, that's just a subscriber, this is kind of like a life update when it comes to me, and I don't really know how to get into this topic, really. Um, as you guys know, or you've known, or if you follow me for long, I actually suffer from severe depression and anxiety. Um, yeah, diagnosed with this since 2015. So I've been had this for four years. And the reason I was diagnosed with severe depression and anxiety is because I tried to submit commit suicide. And that is like a big red flag that you have it. You know what I'm saying? And before I get started, I'm not making any jokes or anything about this condition. I didn't this is just a little story about me and I just wanna like let you guys know on it. So, um 2015 I tried to commit suicide was in a mental health hospital, right? And they got put me on some antidepressants and they also started me on birth control because they believed that the reason why I had severe depression and anxiety is because I have PMDD, which is like, um, that's basically your cycle is connected to the reason why you feel bad. So if you're like, usually people when they have like PMS, they have it for like maybe a week before their period. I have it for two weeks before my period. So basically that feeling of PMS times 100 for like three weeks out of the month, I literally have like one month, one week out of the month that I feel fine and normal and then the rest of the months feels, you know what I'm saying? Not trying to make a joke out of it, but that's really how it feels. So that's what I was diagnosed with. And the thing is I've had it maybe as long as I've had started my period, but I didn't, it wasn't like, I just didn't know that's what I had until I tried to commit suicide. So like all the past things, like I've always had this for my whole, my whole entire life I've had this. It's just that I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just what I had and this the life I had, like, you know, life sucks, you know, basically put a bow on it. I'm always gonna be sad and that's just how life is. Well, it is for me, but I didn't know that that it wasn't life isn't supposed to feel like that. You're not supposed to feel that way every freaking day and that that condition that has that feeling has a condition and it's called it depression and you also have anxiety. So that feeling that you have every day that's not supposed to happen and you know basically this this is why you have it and blah blah. So I was diagnosed with that. And then um I was put on the pills and everything after my um my episode, whatever you want to call it, mental breakdown. So I was put on a medicine and they told me that I was forever going to have this condition and, you know, you're going to have to do things differently than in your life. Like, you have to, like, go to therapy. You always have to, like, make sure you're, like, you're all right and you always have, you know, you got to know, figure out coping mechanisms to help you feel better and, you know, work through your problems and stuff like that. You can't, you know, try to off yourself every single um, time you feel bad. And also, like, this condition is, like, a lot of people with, like, alcoholism, um, you know, get addicted to drugs because of this feeling because they that they don't know any other way to cope with it. So they try to, like, cover this mask, this feeling. If you are doing that, Baby girl, please get help. Baby boy, please get help. This is not, that is not the way to handle your problems. 
where am I taking this video? So I need to talk about me. So I so once I started when I got down to the yeah, I know I was put on a whole bunch of pills and I was feeling amazing. I was on a the a medicine they prescribed me. Um, they prescribed me Prozac and like birth control, and I didn't like the Prozac because Prozac makes me feel numb and like uh, like you, I'm not here when I'm on Prozac, so I don't like taking it. Like I literally feel numb when I take it so I was like N I'm not I don't like feeling that way so I was on birth control for three years and I loved it and the only thing I didn't like about birth control was it made me gain home much of weight but it did control my mood a little bit better like I thought I was like I would still have anxiety attacks I was still you know feel sad but it wasn't like an everyday type of thing it'd be like you know once in a blue moon you know and I felt really good when, the, when I was on birth control. And then recently, this past October, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. Then I found God and I was like, man, like I really feel like I have this. I don't really, God has me. I don't need to be on anything anymore. So I stopped taking birth control and my Prozac and all that other pill, all the uh, medicine that um, the doctor prescribed me because I was just, I had people in my life telling me, making me feel like, what what I was struggling with was little and they gave me confident that I could handle it and that I was, you know, girl, you you tripping. You don't you, that was back in the past, you know, you don't got it anymore, you know, basically. And like so I felt it, that I was comfortable to take off the stuff and I was like, you know, I'm straight, I'm good, whatever. And um, no. It has hit me like a ton of bricks. I've been so sad. I cry all the time. When I'm driving, I'm crying. When I'm brushing my teeth, I'm crying. I feel like like I'm literally living in hell. And like nobody is helping me out. And I'm struggling. And I'm crying. And I'm having anxiety attacks every time I wake up. I'm literally going through it. And not going to cry, but like literally, I feel like I'm going crazy. And I didn't think mental health was so important until I went back like I feel as bad as when I was trying to commit suicide that's how sad I am and I have nothing to be sad about like I have all the problems that I have in my life are fixable problems but I but the way that my mind makes me think is like I can't do it I'm a failure like I guess it's like literally having going through war with yourself 24 7 like I could be with you but I would never be with, I'm not there with you at all <laughs> like I'm smiling but trust me I'm literally dying inside and that's really what it feels like and it's just like you wonder why these people like you know jump off bridges to shoot themselves and you know because they feel like how I feel and like and I and if you feel this way and just know you're not alone sweetie but you you can't continue to feel your way and try to like numb your pain and like keep like how you're living your life you're not supposed to be sad 24-7. Now, trust me, this is somebody that was sad 24-7, wasn't sad for, like, a couple of years, and thought she was, like, cured, and then she took off. And so, no, this is something, this is for real, this is a problem, this is a this is a mental health problem, this is a disease that we have, and it's just, like, you, we, you have to, you have to work on yourself. You have to get help. You can't, don't. Don't make don't let nobody make this seem like this is a little thing and that you're you're over dramatic because you're not. You're suffering. You're it's like having an open wound cut on yourself and nobody sees it and it keeps on growing and growing and growing and the only person that feels the pain of this open wound is you and like the only way to heal it is not trying to be like drug yourself up but you gotta get you gotta you can't it's like you, it's literally like you are dependent on something to make you feel better but it's like it's important like vitamins and like taking like antidepressant is important being on birth control is important if it's going to make you feel better it's important you have to do it you have to do it there's nothing but to do it and i'm making this i to, this the reason why i'm making this video and the reason why i even came on here today was so if you have depression, if you have anxiety, if you have bipolar, whatever, even if you feel sad, you know, you need to get checked up on because how you're feeling, 
you don't need to be feeling like that. And I trust me, you're not alone because the devil, that's the way the devil wants to work with you. He wants to make you feel like you're alone and you're not. Because there's millions of people that are going through how I feel, how you feel. But the thing is, to make us people, people with mental health issues feel better, we have to do the steps where we have to find coping mechanisms. We have to go to therapy. We have to, you know, do things to make us feel better. We have self care is the most important care because if you're not caring about yourself, nobody can care you. If you don't have no, nobody can love you if you don't love yourself. So you have to continue to work on yourself 24 seven. And basically, I am going through a very rough patch, and I am trying my best to stay on top of this YouTube and school and all this stuff. So if I'm not posting, trust me. I, it's not because I don't want to. I'm really struggling, and I'm really trying to post stuff, but I just don't have... I'm just not in good spirits, and I don't want to, like, hang, like be sad on camera, so that's really what it is. I'm going to leave a link to, like, you know, a suicide watch if you guys... For you guys. I'm not, because I promise you, I'm not, not, I'm not, not that sad to the point where I want to do that or, like, cut myself or anything like that, not self-harm myself anymore, but I am sad 24-7. <laughs> And that's not good either. Um, but if you feel that way and you need to, um, you know, figure out your, your, like, issues and stuff like that, you definitely need to go talk to your doctor, talk to somebody, talk to your friends or your family, and allow them to, you need to go get help. You can't do this. This is a fight that you literally cannot do alone. And even though I am a strong person, but right now I'm getting beat up and I'm making and I'm making myself feel like I'm not a strong person because I'm not helping myself. Like, you know, when you're going to war, people don't just go to war with just a knife. You got to go to war with a gun. You know what I'm saying? You got to make sure that your your yourself is prepared for, to go in battle cuz that's what you're doing. You're literally battling depression. You're literally fighting to be happy. You're fighting to be the person that you know you are and to be to go into battle ready. You have to have the supplies. And if you don't have the supplies, you cannot be successful. You'll just end up like a drug addict or you know killing yourself and like you can't let yourself get to that point I can't have my followers get to that point because I know a lot of you guys suffer from it because when I made my video you guys said you guys felt the same way and the reason why I don't address this issue a lot is because it makes me uncomfortable but I have to be uncomfortable to help other people I can't just be if I know I'm going through it and just be like, gang, gang, gang. No, I have to let y'all know because this video is going to help somebody. If you're struggling with something, just know that you're not alone. Ever. And remember, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of hope in a future. God has a plan for you. Just don't give up on it. Because if you're giving up on your plans... You're letting the devil win, and that's what he wants. And don't give him what you want, what he wants. He wants you to feel alone. He wants you to, you know, join him in hell. I know this is kind of like biblical and stuff like that, but don't let don't let your demons win. Don't let them win. You're so much stronger than them. You have so much power in you to fight them. You don't need to let them win when you have God and people that love you on your side. I love you. If nobody love if nobody tells you they love you today, trust me, I love you and I want you to succeed and I want you to feel better about your life. I care about my life now. That's the only way I'm here and the only way I keep on pushing and because I love God. That's the only way I'm still here right now. Cuz trust me, if I never got help, if I never took the steps to like, you know, Work on me, read the Bible, you know, work on me basically. I would not I would not be here. I would I would have tried it again. I would have successfully did it again. I'm never gonna go back to a, a Salem Asylum again. This is never gonna happen again. We're gonna work it out before we get to that point, straight up. <laughs> and I need y'all to not get there. Cause once you get there, just know. You hit rock bottom. <laughs> Ooh, they probably think I'm crazy now. If we crazy, I know I'm not the only one. Yeah. I guess I'm done talking. Bye.